Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast, This Week in America. Where is the Justice by William F. Hill is a captivating and mind-blowing underdog story. William was born in 1935 in Vermont. He went on to college and spent time in the military. He set out on the American dream, building a life for himself and his family. Thriving businesses within the agricultural and real estate industries and achieving status as a certified auctioneer. All interrupted in the 1990s by Vermont bank failures, duplicitous bank officers, and questionable practices at the FBI, FDIC, and courts taking away what William had accomplished. Where is Justice is a testament to resolve and dedication. And author William F. Hill is our guest on This Week in America. William, welcome to the program. Thank you for being with us today. Well, I'm glad to do it. I don't know if I can do a good job, but I will try. I am sure that you can in telling your story. The book is Where is the Justice? We'll tell you where the book's available as we go through the interview today. William, what inspired you to write this story? Well, I was, the government was always trying to ask me. They didn't like things I was doing. I fixed up a lot of older properties, and they wanted, they wanted to tear them down and do things. So they always were finding ways to inter- interfere in my life, doing things that they didn't want to do. <coughs> Excuse me, but I kept trying, and I always tried to help people, and they didn't like that either. I helped a lot of poor people buy homes, help them finance, and they didn't like They kept writing to me and telling me I shouldn't do that. Poor people should stay poor, and I shouldn't be helping them. And then, so they didn't like me for that. They was always against me for doing anything I did. That's kind of where I got in trouble. And so I wrote this book trying to explain some of this stuff, not for, not to, uh, just to let people know what kind of a mess they could get into, you know. Well, yes, and you've done a wonderful job with this in detailing all of the facts are in William's book. This is the second edition, Where is the Justice? Second edition by William F. Hill. You find the book at Amazon, all the visual places, a link on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. So much that you accomplished in your life, and it was all at risk and in some cases taken away by the government through this process including the government at one time broke into your house. What happened after the government broke into your house? Explain that situation. Before they did that, they came and audited me. The IRS audited me three times out of seven, I think. They couldn't find anything wrong. And they just kept asking me for different things. Then eventually one morning when we came home, there was about 20 cars in our dooryard. And it was uh, was the, uh, the government. It was Marshall, so they broke into our house, trashed it, and uh, smashed up everything they could. My wife has, became a very poor family and just learned to read and write. And she had bought a lot of, we had a, well, the first year we'd be able to afford to do it. She bought Christmas presents for all the family, the kids, the grandchildren, and they came in our house. We came home, there was cars in the rail, we couldn't figure out what was going on. They had smashed our door down and they had come in. And it was about 35 or 40 of them in our house, smashing up everything. And they had the, she had all these Christmas presents wrapped. They tore them all apart and smashed them. It just about drove her insane because she already had cancer and was having a hard time. And so that's kind of the way we got involved with them. And it's been that bad ever since. It's just a frightening story that William tells so well in his book, Where is the Justice? What has shaped your belief that America is the greatest country in the world, and how has this belief influenced your or your perspective on success and hard work? Where did this come from, and how has it impacted your life? I came from a hard-working family. We learned to work hard and pay our bills and take care, look out for people, and I was very gullible. I tried to help everybody that needed help, I guess, but I helped some people, maybe I shouldn't have, but got me into trouble doing it, but... Well, and you go into detail in telling the story, and it's amazing the people that you helped continue to help even after you had all of these problems. Can you share an example or two of a time when you went out of your own way to help someone succeed, and how did it make you feel? What kind of feeling do you get when you're able to to help somebody, help them prosper? To do that, that was, I guess, the way we were brought up. 
I always tried to help people. A lot of people taking advantage of me. There was a woman that came around a couple times. No better to get mixed up with her, but she came called me Monday last week, and she was. Uh, she said she was living out of her car. She had a job uh, flagging flagging on a construction job. And could she come and spend the night? Well, I thought, well, I guess we'll be hard for that. So she came and she stayed. And, and I had I had put quite a lot of money in my pocket. I was going to take it to the bank the next morning and have a check made out to send to another place. And I got up in the morning, the money was gone out of my pocket, and she was gone. And so that's about the way that turned out. I didn't have very good luck with her. I should have known better, because we'd had a little problem with it before. But, gee, I always trusted people, and always tried to help people. Yes. And it hurt me many times. How does that make you feel when you try to help somebody and they take advantage of that? It, most people, well, I guess, would think maybe I shouldn't do this anymore, but it seems like it just makes you more determined to be able to, to successfully help people. How do you feel when, when someone takes advantage of you in that situation? That's my big fault. I always try to help people and, do the, and improve their lives. So I, I guess I've hurt myself many times doing that. But. Well, you've been impacted a number of people as well. Our guest on the program, if you're just joining us, is William F. Hill. He is the book, where author of the book, Where is the Justice? Second edition, book available wherever books are sold. Information on our website, thisweekinamerican.us. You've helped so many people really get a start, maybe buy that first home. How good is that feeling when you're able to take your success and, and use that to help other people? So the government didn't like it. They always told me I shouldn't do that. Poor people should stay poor. They wrote and told me that several times. They didn't want me doing that stuff. Why is that? I mean, you would almost think that if you're taking care of them, then they don't have to take care of them. How, how strange was it to get a letter saying you should leave these people to be poor and not worry about it? Say that again. I'm sorry. Well, yeah, you would think they would want want you to encourage you to help these people so they don't have to, and they're telling you no. What was your reaction when they told you to leave them alone? So they could control them, keep them on food stamps, and stuff. They didn't want us helping them. Well, it's just a remarkable story that uh, unfolds in William F. Hill's like book, The Where Is the Justice, the, the second edition. How do you feel family values contribute to a fulfilling life and overall society well-being? How does that all contribute? My family hasn't had much to do with me since I got into all these messes. And I guess I, guess I can see why the government has done everything they could to destroy us. So it's, it's, it's been rough. Well, and you've, you've gone through this, and you're taking your lessons to, to share with other people. It, it, it's an underdog story. It's a word of, of caution and alarm for other people. What can happen when things go off the rails, as they have in, in many cases in, in William's life? How do you respond to the, uh, the argument that successful people, individuals, should be restricted to support the less fortunate, which is what basically the, the government was telling you? That was always my feeling, that everybody should be helping everybody else. More fortunate people, more educated, and, you know, fortunate people we had, the better off we all were. Well, it makes so much sense, and that's been a life mission of William Hill, our, our guest on the program, author of Where is the Justice, the second edition, book available wherever books are sold, direct you to, uh, to Amazon and information and a link on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. In your opinion, how do successful individuals like yourself contribute more to, to helping the less fortunate compared to the government programs? Talk, talk about that for a second. I always tried, and the government never did. The government didn't like the things I did. They kept raising. I got several letters from what they wrote told me that poor people should stay poor and I shouldn't be helping them. And I, I didn't agree with them, and probably that hurt me, but well, and you, you paid a price for it in all the suffering that you and your family were, were put through. And it's all detailed, great detail, in William's book, Where is the Justice? Second Edition. 
Can you explain your connection, the connection between success, property taxes, and benefiting the community through education and, and local services? Well, I did a lot for the town. I was a, I belonged to the, I was a selectman. I was a bank director. And I, I think I had a lot of respect for a lot of a long time. And they always called on me to do things, and I always did them when they asked me. And, and I always wanted to see people do better and do, uh, do, do things for the community. And I did a lot of things for the community. I fixed up a lot of older buildings and got them back on the, back on the tax rolls which were good and ready to fall down. And, I could listen to quite a number of them. To hear it described, it's almost that like you were an ideal citizen, yet you had this resistance from the local government. It's all in William's book, Where is the Justice? Second edition, book now available. Amazon, the usual places, and we'll have that link on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. From your experience, how do successful people play a role in creating job opportunities, contributing to the reduction of welfare dependency, because you've been there doing that. How do they, how do they, how do they, how do they contribute? Well, I always thought the more successful people helped other people, tried to help, and that was always my, that was always my feeling and my goal, I guess. Well, it, it was sort of a motto of, of your life, something. Was that from an early age? You, you talk about growing up on the, the family farm, growing up, uh, born in Vermont in 1935. Talk about your early years. Is that where th- these ideas came from? To I was stru- young. I hung around business places, and Sam Daniels really made furnaces and all that stuff. And they were always good to me. I tried to learn all I could from them, and they were good to me. And I always got along good with them successful people and, and I like being with them. Well, and you had a remarkable life, having a remarkable life with uh, the military, the college degree, I'm talking about building up successful businesses and, and getting the uh, all of that success in place. Talk about that because you were leading, living the American dream at one time, weren't you? I always thought I was. I always tried hard, yeah. And all of a sudden, yeah, go ahead, finish it. Because, and then it all came crashing down, didn't it? Pardon? Yeah, then it all came crashing down, and it's all in, in first, William's first, book. The government didn't like us. They didn't like anything we were doing. And they done everything they could to destroy us. Well, and they all, and these are just remarkable incidents that you will read in William's book, book available uh, wherever books are sold, Where is the Justice? I love the title of that. Talk about how you came up with that title, and where is the justice in your life? Well, I think that's what it meant. I just wanted to let people know that some of the problems they could get into by getting involved with the government and some of these other outlaws. I just didn't like it. You talk about uh, your your basic philosophy, a man's word was his bond. Talk about how important that was to you and how people took advantage of that, it seems, at times. A lot of people did, and a lot of people were all good. I had a lot of wonderful friends. Cause I'm old now, and they're all dead and gone, but I had a lot of wonderful friends, and they were good to me, and... And I think I was real respected for a long time. Anytime they wanted something, they called me. I did a lot of things for different town organizations and stuff in town. I fixed up a lot of property, fixed up, it was a swinging bridge. It had been down for years. I fixed it up and got it going and gave it to the town. People who live across it were pretty happy. And I did a lot of things like that. And I never took, I never got a grant or help or anything. I never asked for any help from anybody. I mentioned in the beginning, a lot of this started interrupted in the 90s by the Vermont bank failures, among things. What happened during that time? I want to talk about that, the bank officers, and then the the federal agencies that you were involved with. Talk about the Vermont bank failures and the impact that had on you. Well, I had a good relationship with the banks, and I bought a lot of their foreclosed properties from them, and I fixed them up, sold them to low-income people, and helped them get financed. The government didn't like that, and 
I, was, I got along real good with the bank. They always told me I had AAA credits, and I was very happy with dealing with them. And they were very good to me. I can't complain about anything they did at that time. They were the Lundinville Bank and Caledonia Bank and Bradford Bank. And some of those banks were very good. And, but that's all changed. You know, they all were taken over by different people with different, different attitudes about things. And they're not the same kind of people we used to deal with. Well, no, and you talk about duplicitous bank officers. Talk about that. There was a, a, a story in the book about a days in French, a days in franchise, where basically they they lied to you to get you to to invest, and it caused great financial hardship. Talk about I that. Did a, okay. Yeah. Did a couple, and the FBI came to see me, and they warned me that the government was asking, and they were going to do something. They warned me about this woman that was very vicious and very educated and she was going to be around and she would do anything she could to destroy our lives. I only met her once. She came on, she went to the bank and she told them a lot of stories that weren't true. And then she got involved with my grandson, who always was very good to me. But somehow she's convinced him that I've done things wrong and he's, and he's become a thorn on my side. and tried to take over. As a matter of fact, they had me sign some paper, which I didn't realize I was signing, that gave him power of attorney over my my life, my business, and everything. And so that's been a, a nightmare. He's been terrible. And this woman is just, he, she was all good. This woman got involved. I understand they got married. I don't know if they did or not, but she, she was, uh, I was warned by the FBI that she was very vicious and very educated. And, she would find some way to destroy us if she could, and she sure could. One of the many stories that unfolds in William's book, Where is the Justice? by William F. Hill, book available at Amazon.com, uh, all the usual places. Links on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Also, the you mentioned the FBI. The FDIC was involved as well. Uh, what kind of relationship did you have with, with the FDIC? Well, they came to my house, and they warned me about this woman, and they warned me about the government. They said the government was doing some very funny things, and they were suspicious. I should be suspicious, and I thought they were there to help me. Before they got around, they found a way to beat me, too, and trick me. When you look back, we've got a couple minutes left in, in the conversation today. When you look back and you see all of this that uh, you were involved in. Much of this goes back to your your desire to, to help people. Any regrets as you look back? If you had to go back and do it over, would you? what would you do differently? Well, I, I don't have a lot of regrets with a lot of things I did. I know I made a lot of mistakes, and I listened to a lot of people I shouldn't have. I always try to help people, and I want to see people do well. I guess that's the way I was brought up. And that's the way I've always been. What do you hope the takeaway is from the the reader of Where is the Justice? What do you hope that we get from reading your story? Well, I hope people will realize the problems they can get into and uh, just just help them guide their lives, watch the the trouble they could get into, you know. I didn't do it to make money or anything else. It was just to help people if I could. What was it like writing the story and going back and recreating all of these, bringing back to your memory all of these incidents that happened? How painful was that for you to relive all of these circumstances? Well, I never let it get to me. I always tried to keep an uh, you know, open mind. and it, it, it did take me a long time to write it. I guess it was over a period of years. So it's not like I was... Uh, it wasn't a hurry-up thing. Oh, I yes. did it to... What is life uh, like for you now? Well, I'm living alone here by myself. I have the last five or six years since my wife passed away. They were terrible for my wife. I guess uh, my wife came from a very... She never learned to read or write. She grew up poor. And then she got a job for extension service. And she had to learn in a hurry. So she learned to read and write. She had the rating as one of the best they had ever had. She's done a good job, and she had a lot of energy and a lot of, you know, in the health of people. She's done a lot for a lot of people, and there was a lot of articles written about her. I could supply them to somebody that 
one of the people she worked for. I thought she was probably one of the best in the business. Well, and you talk about uh, Charlotte, your your second wife, in in the book, and uh, uh, really a remarkable lady that impacted your life and was there for you through through all of this. The book is Where Is the Justice? This is the second edition. It's uh, available wherever books are sold, Amazon, the usual places. I thank ParchmentGlobalPublishing.com for arranging our conversation with William on today's program. William, it's a remarkable story. It's an underdog story. It will alarm you. It will shock you. It will possibly awake you as a reader when you when you read this story. Thank you so much for being with us on the program to, to share your story. Well, I'm uh, glad to do it. I'm, I wish I had a better <laughs> outcome to tell you about. But everything has gotten real bad. I've lived alone, alone the last six years since my wife passed away. They destroyed my wife. They did everything they could to give her a hard time. She was a hard worker. Well, it sounds like it, and a very important part of your life and the successes that you had, and you did so much, continue to do what you can, and had so much success in, in contributing to the community. It's a remarkable story, a wake-up call, again, for all of us, what can happen with government out of control. The book is Where is the Justice? Second edition by William F. Hill. Book available at Amazon. Again, my thanks to ParchmentGlobalPublishing.com. All this information, of course, on our website, This Week in America. And we're back on today's program right after these messages. You're listening to This Week in America with Rick Bratton. More after this. 